If you are frequently rearranging items to accommodate new thrift store finds and purchases, then probably just like me, you don't live in a decorated home. Here's a quick look at my recent haul after visiting some of my favorite thrift stores. In today's video, I want to show you how I use and repurpose these thrift store finds, often in unexpected ways, to create a cozy, collected, not decorated home. So you might be wondering, what's the difference between a collected home and a decorated home? Well, a decorated home prioritizes a design style to achieve a perfectly cohesive and visually appealing look, whereas a collected home prioritizes personal expression, embracing a cozy and eclectic mix of old and new items that evolve over time. When thrifting, I usually just buy things that I like and figure out what to do with them after I get home. But I knew exactly what I wanted to do with this bread box. My husband thinks that our new puppy Edgar needs 50 different kinds of dog treats. And the top of this old science table has become a messy display of pet food. Luckily, this bread box is large enough to corral most of those treats. Thanks to the modern farmhouse trend, we've been using plain white dishes for the past 10 years. I don't know how I convinced myself that I liked all white, but now I'm going to start swapping them out with an eclectic mix of pretty china patterns that I love. I'm curious, does anyone else like this idea of mixing a variety of patterns? One of the Courier and Ives calendar prints was of colorful fruit, and as soon as I saw it, I knew I wanted to frame it and use it somewhere in my kitchen. I found a perfectly sized frame in my stash, and its terracotta colored mat looked perfect with the print. After removing the cardboard backing in glass, I freshened up the wood frame with a little restore of finish applied to very fine steel wool. I removed the picture from the mat. Then I thoroughly applied glue stick to the back of the fruit print and then adhered it to the frame's original picture. Doing this removes all the wrinkles in the fruit print and assures that it won't rip or tear in the future. Next, I aligned the mat over the print and used paper tape to attach them. I added it to the frame, returned the cardboard backing, bent back the nails to hold it in place, and then covered the nails with more paper packing tape. Wow, I really love this fruit print. Thank you to Forio for sponsoring today's video. When I was younger, I did not take care of my skin and now I am really paying for it. So I'm always on the lookout for skincare products that actually work. And today I want to tell you about one of those products, the Foreo UFO 3. The UFO 3 is a deep facial hydration device that combines thermotherapy, cryotherapy, LED light therapy, and T-sonic pulsations. I don't even know what all those things are. I just know they're really good for my skin. And I love that it's super easy to use. You just choose your mask, pop it on the device, and connect to the app. The app guides you through the whole process, so you get the perfect treatment for your selected mask. Or, if you prefer, you can use it offline and customize your own treatment. And let me tell you, the results are amazing. My skin feels soft, hydrated, and plumped after just one use. And after several weeks, I really think that it has helped to even out my skin tone and make my wrinkles less noticeable. The UFO3 is an investment. 
But if you're serious about your skincare, then I think it's worth it. And today, if you use the link in my description box, you'll get 30% off. Plus, the first 50 people to use my code COTTAGE10 will get an additional 10% off. And honestly, that is the best deal I have ever seen them offer. I traded out the fruit art on my kitchen counter and moved the smaller oil painting to an empty wall next to the pantry doors. In this different spot, the painting feels like a completely new piece of artwork. Now, of course, I needed to rearrange the counter on the opposite side of the stove. I traded out the brass tray for the thrifted toll painted tray, and I added napkins to the butter crock. It was looking crowded, so I moved the tile tray to a shelf above the microwave, and then I switched the location of the tray and the oil painting. These are both hung to the wall with Velcro strips, which work really great on all types of backsplash. It was still looking a bit crowded, so I moved the butter crock to the other side. Is it just me or is there anyone else who thinks that vintage toll paintings are absolutely charming? Which do you prefer, the vintage toll tray or the Courier and Ives fruit print? I had also thrifted a blue and white clock plate. To create a working clock, I removed the clock hands and battery mechanism from a small wood clock that I had also thrifted. You know I'm going to use this orange clock box in another DIY anyway. Two-sided foam tape works really well to adhere the clock box to the back of the plate. Then you just need to reattach the clock hands in the appropriate order. I love a small wall clock hung above a doorway. Not only does it look cute, but for a change, this clock actually works. I had an idea for using these three small drawers. To create a cabinet, I cut the handle off of this divided wicker basket. I don't know, do you think this was a silverware caddy? I only had three drawers, so I just stuck a small chicken salt shaker in the empty slot. I decided to add the small child's chair as the opposing book end, and to style it, I added a few books across the leg rungs and added a vintage flower sifter on the seat filled with a droopy faux plant. This area always looks so busy due to all of the pictures on the bulletin board, and I have thought about taking the bulletin board down, but for now, I moved the chair to another spot and just minimized the decor on top of the dresser. In the dining room, I was beyond tired of this large metal arch and wanted to replace it with some antique tin tiles that my brother just gave me. Someone had once paid $200 for this set of tiles, but my brother got them for free. I hung them up first to see if I was going to like them here, and then I took them down because I wanted to apply some white wax to tone down the dark brown and rust tones of the tiles. I wasn't worried about ruining the original tin tiles because I could tell this was not the original paint and that these tiles had been recently repainted. I just brushed on the wax, making sure to get into all of the crevices, and then wiped and dabbed off the excess wax. I love how these turned out. So of course, I had to create a spring vignette on the buffet, adding in some thrift store vintage books. To keep the books from knocking over the vase, I weighed it down with a bag of rocks from Dollar Tree. I love that this spring vignette was inspired by wall decor that was totally free. 
Although I still think these two plates are pretty, I was tired of them too. And luckily, I had the perfect artwork to replace them. The gorgeous blue and white needlepoint. I just wonder how long it took someone to make this lovely piece. And who in their right mind would give it away? This blue and white wall sconce was cracked and missing its glass shade, but I didn't care. It was going to look so cute on the family room wall next to the vintage desk. To hang it, I needed to use a large screw or a picture hanger that I could bend to fit through the sconce hanger. I added some sticky tack inside the candle cup to securely hold a remote-controlled candle and then topped it with a glass shade off of another thrift store find. I was drawn to the dark wood on this $3 vintage magazine rack. Once again, I polished up the wood with some furniture refinisher and fine steel wool, followed by a coat of feed and wax. I'm going to use it on the fireplace hearth in my family room, putting magazines in the back half and pretty decor in the front. I added a couple flocked rabbits, a droopy plant, and a vintage doily for some interesting texture. So many of the afghans I see in thrift stores are made with some truly awful color combinations. But I thought this beige and dark red one would look good in my living room next to the red table that was a recent DIY project. I had thrifted a few other decor items that I wanted to place in the living room, including a tiny ceramic cottage to add next to the one I purchased in Ireland and one gifted to me by a sweet viewer. I also added a small brass bell to the two bells that were already on the lower shelf. I love the look of a little china mixed in with books, and I had thrifted a transferware cup and saucer similar to the red bowl I already had on the shelf. As I was arranging and rearranging things, it occurred to me that the red transferware would probably fit nicely into the large drawer that I had thrifted. I think using things in unexpected ways like this is also a sign of a collected home. I thought I'd add the fox hunting themed stein to the other bookcase in the living room. But just like with the desk shelves, adding that one item triggered a rearranging of all the shelves. One tip on arranging shelves is to try to stagger where you place the books and where you place the greenery to create variety and an overall balanced appearance. You know that I can't pass up a good bird picture. It took me a minute to figure out how to get them out of these aluminum frames. Have you ever seen a frame like this before? I had been saving these big, thick, thrifted wood frames for a project just like this. The bird print was wrinkly, so just like with the fruit print, I applied glue stick to the back of the print, covering it completely, and then adhering it to the backing board, smoothing out all of the wrinkles. These are going to be so pretty, but the wood is really orange, so I think I'll paint the frames. First, I sprayed them with Zinsser Primer, and then I painted them with three coats of some leftover green paint that I had. I'm not sure where these bird pictures are going to end up. I think they might look nice in a room makeover that I have planned for a future video. In addition to bird prints, I'm also obsessed with vintage frames, and I loved the unusual green paint on this one. At first, I thought I'd use it to display the embroidered doily that I had thrifted, just using the picture wire like a clothesline. But once I saw it on the wall, I decided that the doily was just 
too small for the frame. So instead, I grabbed a tall wicker basket that I had thrifted for just a dollar fifty, and I ran some florist wire through the back side and suspended it from the picture wire. Then I added some faux greenery and the doily inside the basket. So here's the thing. I would never have thought to put together a picture frame, a basket, and a doily like this if I hadn't just thrifted these items and then brainstormed ideas on how I could use them. So I think collecting actually promotes creativity. You may have seen the recent makeover of my son's old bedroom where I used a William Morris patterned wallpaper with dusty pink flowers in it. So now, suddenly, I've been drawn to pink things at thrift stores, and I found an adorable tiny pitcher with birds and a pink floral spode plate that I added to the shelves in my son's room. In addition to pink things, I also seem drawn to really small things lately, like this tiny plate. By pure coincidence, I also purchased a small wood frame, and the opening was the perfect size to display the tiny plate. I just hot glued a piece of scrap fabric over the glass and then hot glued the plate to the fabric. Because I wanted to hang this, I added a small D-ring to the back and popped off the easel. I also thrifted this small and really unique hurricane lantern. It can sit on a table or hang on a wall. Its coppery color coordinated well with the tiny frame, so I decided to hang them next to one another on my china cabinet. If you too are drawn to tiny things, you might consider displaying them together as a collection on a tiered tray. And if you'd like to see how I've furnished my home with almost entirely thrift store finds, here's another video I think you'll like. Thanks so much for watching today. Hope to see you next week.